In this video, I'm gonna teach you the seven steps of how I went from zero to over 300,000 Spotify monthly listeners without ever landing on an editorial playlist, without spending a dollar on playlist promotion, and while being a fully independent artist without a record label. And I'm not just gonna make this video all about me and what I've done. I'm gonna walk you through the entire process in detail of how you can do the same exact thing. I've seen the strategies that I'm about to share with you work successfully numerous times with a variety of artists. So let's jump into this video and I'll show you the seven steps of how you can increase your Spotify monthly listeners today. So before I get into the seven steps, I think it's first important for you to understand that there's numerous types of playlists within the Spotify ecosystem. Let me break these down for you. All right, so type number one is editorial. These are actually the playlists that Spotify owns and controls and include playlists like New Music Friday, Hot Country, and several other playlists along these lines. Really, the only way to get on these playlists is to actually have somebody at Spotify add your song to the playlist. And while it definitely is possible, it's much more difficult to accomplish without a label or a big team behind you, especially depending on what genre you're in. Type number two is algorithmic playlists. So these are also Spotify owned and controlled, but will be wildly different from person to person based on your listening habits. Some examples of these are Release Radar, Discover Weekly, and Radio. The third type of playlist is actually third-party company playlists. A lot of times these are playlists owned by labels and large music marketing companies. While you can get on these, in many cases you actually need to be signed to the record label or be affiliated with the company that owns the playlist in order to get on these. And the fourth type of playlist at Spotify is what's known as a user-generated playlist. This would be like if you or I went on Spotify and made a playlist of our favorite songs. Now, a bunch of these user-generated playlists are really small, just made for the playlist owner to listen to or to share with a few of their friends, but there's actually quite a few of these playlists that are large, as big or close to as big as some of the big Spotify editorial playlists. For the purposes of this video and the steps I'm about to lay out for you, we're gonna primarily focus our effort on this fourth type of playlist, the user-generated playlist. So with all this being said, let's go ahead and jump into the seven steps. All right, so step one of this process is to make great, high-quality music. So this step almost should go without saying, but I'm a music producer and songwriter first and foremost, so I really felt like I couldn't make this video without at least mentioning this step. Really, the main reason I'm talking about this is because I believe the other six steps and techniques that I'm about to lay out for you in this video really are for nothing if you don't have this step taken care of. Simply put, the quality of your music from a songwriting and production standpoint needs to be great. Now, just because you have really high quality songwriting and production and a song that's great that you're really proud of doesn't actually guarantee that anyone will listen and we're going to spend the rest of the video talking about how to actually get people to listen but let's be real here for a second the music space is highly competitive and it's highly saturated a quick google search will even tell you that there's approximately 60,000 songs a day being uploaded to spotify so really take the time to dial in your music don't just release the best song that you can write and produce personally release the best song possible Work with the best songwriters and producers you can work with to help you accomplish this goal of putting out high quality music. And if you stick around to the end of this video, I have a couple of resources available that can help you with this part specifically. So that's step one and the foundation which everything else in this video is built on, which is to make great high quality music. All right, so step two in this process is to fully set up your Spotify page with a high quality brand. To me, this step and really the rest of this video is all about controlling what we can control. There's so many things in the music industry that we can't control. We can't control things like if our song blows up or if somebody at Spotify decides to like our song enough to add it to their editorial playlist. But there are several things we can control, and one of those things we can control is the look and feel of our Spotify artist page. You need to present your brand in the best light possible, and remember, on the Spotify platform, you're competing with all the world's top artists out there. Your perception determines your reception, and just like spending time on the quality of your music, the way that you spend time and take the time to dial in the look and feel of your Spotify artist page will say a lot about who you are when a new listener comes across your music. So really, you owe it to yourself to put in 
a little bit of extra work to have your Spotify artist page look good. Let me give you some easy tips to help out with this. So tip one, and I literally learned this from a friend of mine who's the head of promotion and marketing at one of the labels here in Nashville. And this is literally what they do all the time for their own artists, is to go check out the artists that are similar to you as well as the world's top artists and just draw inspiration from their visuals and the way their Spotify page is set up. If we look at an artist like Taylor Swift, for example, and look at the way her Spotify page is set up, what does her photography look like? What does her bio look like? You know, I think it's easy to think with an artist like Taylor Swift, she has unlimited budget, so she's gonna go do all sorts of super complicated stuff. But really from looking at her page, we can see that she has simple but high quality things on her Spotify page. So take inspiration from this and other artists in your genre and make your Spotify page look the same. Another tip to pay attention to is what mobile canvases look like with some of the world's top artists. In my opinion, creating a mobile canvas for your song on Spotify is a way for you to look just a little bit more legit a little bit more pro and help your release look a little bit more official. Now, creating a mobile canvas doesn't have to be anything elaborate. Again, if we go back to looking at what some of the world's top artists are doing, a lot of times they're just filming themselves with an iPhone. But the power of having something filmed and something captured, I think goes a long way in addition to just having your album artwork. And while we're on the topic of building a visual brand, I wanna take a moment to tell you about a company that I love that can help you with your overall online brand tremendously. And that's today's show sponsor, Band Sites. Are you tired of spending endless hours trying to build the perfect website for your music? Frustrated with troubleshooting complicated web issues while sifting through generic templates just to not even like the end result? Well, today's video sponsor, Bandsite, solves all these problems for you. Bandsites is the ultimate high quality done for you web design solution created specifically for bands, artists, and musicians like you. They draw from their years of web design expertise to identify the trends of what the world's top artists are incorporating in their websites. And from there, they've crafted beautiful full website layouts that match the quality of top artists with massive budgets signed to record labels. Bandsites has streamlined the process to make it fast and completely stress-free, and with that, they've made it extremely affordable. You see, if you hired a professional web designer or an agency to make you a website of this caliber, you're typically looking at spending thousands, if not several thousand dollars upfront, plus high monthly retainers. But Bandsites offers all of this to you at no upfront cost with several affordable monthly pricing options. Yes, truly all of this at no upfront cost. And the best part about it, Bandsites really does all of this for you. From the design, development, hosting, support, and even ongoing content updates. There's no more tech headaches, no more struggling with complex design software. You just hit up Bandsites and they take care of all of it for you. Bandsites has built all my own music websites for me and they're truly so easy to work with. And if you're still not convinced, just check out all their countless five-star reviews and you'll see how many other people feel the same way I do. So if you're ready to elevate your online presence, and engage with your fans, all while letting someone else do the heavy lifting for you, visit bandsites.co or click on the link below to see how easy it is to get started. Again, that's bandsites.co to get started with your brand new website. So after you've written and produced quality music and taken the time to dial in your Spotify page, what you're gonna do next is you're gonna schedule your actual release date at least four weeks in advance. It's super important to schedule your release at least four weeks out for a few reasons. Number one is it simply gives you time to get your ducks in a row. It gives you time to go market your song off platform and get social media campaigns together. It also gives you time to implement the coming steps in this video that I'm about to lay out for you. One of the other things these four weeks will give you is ample time to actually pitch your song to Spotify for editorial playlists. Now, like I mentioned, the backbone of this video actually has nothing to do with getting your song on Spotify editorial playlist, but it's really not that much work to write a quick editorial pitch and maybe try to play the lottery, see what happens. Maybe Spotify adds your song. But to really even have a shot at someone from Spotify hearing your song and potentially adding it to an editorial playlist, you do need to give yourself that ample lead time of around four weeks. To me, the most important reason of why you should give yourself ample time with that four week lead time is actually algorithmic playlists. With algorithmic playlists, Spotify will actually populate your current and past listeners of your music with your new release. 
But if you don't give yourself that ample lead time and you know you release your song two, three days, maybe a week after you upload it, Spotify won't have time to properly ingest the song in their system and then therefore won't have time to put it out in the algorithmic playlist that you want it to go to. So give yourself the ample time of four weeks and maybe even five or six weeks if you're a brand new artist with your first release. All right, so step four in this process is to scour user-generated playlists that you hope to land on. Let me show you what I'm talking about with that. So the first thing you're gonna do is compile a list of words along with types of playlists that you think your music and your song would be a good fit for. When we were first doing this with my artist project Outskirts that we successfully grew from zero to over 300,000 monthly listeners without ever landing on a Spotify editorial playlist, some examples of words that we wrote down to go find these playlists included rock, swag, hype, sports, pump up and countless others kind of in that vein. There's truly limitless moods, words, and types of playlists you can come up with here. And if you think you've hit your ceiling, just talk to someone else or do whatever you need to do because I guarantee you, you can always find more. Then after you've thought of your list of words and types of playlists, what you need to do is actually get on Spotify and start typing in words and start finding playlists. Let's jump into the computer here and I'm gonna demonstrate for you what I'm talking about. So again, using outskirts as the example here, we went and found a bunch of playlists that were kind of swag rock. So if I go in my Spotify page here and type in swag and then, you know, key over here from all to songs and playlists, when I click over here on the playlist tab, we see that there's infinite playlists if I just start scrolling down the way here. So if we take a closer look here, any of the ones that say by Spotify, such as this one, so there's Swagger by Spotify with 1.3 million likes, that's how you know it's gonna be an editorial playlist. Might be algorithmic, but in most cases, it's gonna be editorial. So again, the backbone of this whole strategy is user-generated playlists. So we wanna stay away from the editorials. We, for the most part, wanna stay away from the big companies. We wanna go find the individual users. So, you know, if we scroll down the way here, Auburn Game Day, when I typed in swag, if I Bill, Bill Moody, you know, if I click on Bill Moody's profile right here, I can see that Bill Moody is a real person. He's not a company. He's not Spotify, and this looks like a person that I could go find on the internet, which, spoiler alert, that's coming in the next step, and I'll teach you how to do that. But these are the types of playlists that you want to find. If we keep scrolling through here, we can see lots of lots of playlists, lots of Spotify editorial, but again, lots of user-generated. I'll click on another, for example, and there's Swagger Apple TV soundtrack with 1,200 likes here by Andres Pena. And you can see Andres' page here, and he looks like a normal person, real person, not a company, not Spotify editorial. So that's what I'm talking about here. When I say actually go find people, go find user-generated playlists, this is what you wanna go search and find. All right, so this leads us here to step five, which is to actually compile data from the keywords you searched in part four. So as far as actually compiling the data, you can do one of two things. Number one is make your own spreadsheet, or number two, I think this is the better way, is I've actually made my personal spreadsheet template that I've used for this strategy for years, available to you for free in my Spotify outreach assistance pack. You can get access to that in my website, christianhale.co on the free resources page. You can also get access to my free resources page on my website down in the description. But let me actually get in the computer and break down for you what's on this template and what you need to do in this data compilation step. So looking at the template here, you know, we have a variety of things and I'll break it all down for you. But the first thing you can see is this word search category. And this is typically where I start. This is nothing more than the keywords that you just did in step four. So in this example, I was looking for a boxing playlist. So I clicked word search boxing and up came this playlist right here, which the name of the playlist is called Boxing Workout. So we have word search, boxing workout. I then linked to the playlist um, and then filled in some other data. How many followers does this playlist have? Which in this case was 28,020. Does this playlist curator have multiple playlists? In this case, that was no. And then the link to the playlist, which I've included here. Over here on the right side of this template, you see that I have contact information for the playlist curator. And that leads us to a sub step in this data compilation, which is we actually need to put in the hard work of finding the playlist curator on the internet. 
The two places where I think it's easiest to find the Playlist Curator are usually Instagram or Facebook. I honestly find Playlist Curators 50-50 kind of using one of these two methods. One free tip is that oftentimes Playlist Curator's profile pictures will match with their Spotify profile picture. So this can make things really easy when it comes to actually finding the Playlist Curator on the internet. Once you've found the Playlist Curator though, go ahead and put their contact information down over here. The other final things are determining which type of message you're gonna send them. So in this example, let's say we're gonna send them an Instagram message. And then the final two things on this template are this past interactions and past ads. And basically what those are for is using outskirts as an example. The first playlist we'll hit up with a new release are generally playlists or playlisters that have added us before. This just gives us a little bit more of a guarantee and a little bit better ROI on our time because if they've added us before, there's a better chance they'll add us to a future playlist instead of somebody that we've never reached out to before or had any interaction with. So this is really, as you start to implement this strategy over multiple releases, you can keep track of, hey, what playlisters seem to add my music? And then you can go start this process with them on future releases. I wanna mention that there's quite a few playlisters that actually make themselves very easily available and ask for artists like you to reach out to them. A lot of times these playlisters will drop their Instagram or an email in their Spotify bio so that you can easily find them. Other playlisters are harder to find, but that doesn't mean that they aren't willing for you to find them and pitch your music to them. I've had quite a few playlisters just like this that, you know, they're just a normal person on the internet, not putting themselves out there, but finding them through the techniques that I just laid out for you. They're more than happy to hear from you. And then if the song's a good fit, add your music to their playlist. When compiling data, do yourself and the playlist curator a massive favor of actually listening to their playlist. It's really only a good use of your time to reach out to a playlister if you genuinely feel that your song is a good fit for their playlist. And the best way to become familiar with the playlist is to actually take a minute and listen to it. I find that it's most helpful to do this step in the weeks leading up to release day so that when release day rolls around, you can start doing step six, which is to actually craft a message and reach out to the playlist curators. Now, if you'd like my word for word message template that I've successfully used for years now in getting my song onto these Spotify playlists, this also comes included for free in the Spotify Outreach Assistant Pack. So definitely do yourself a favor, grab that free resource for maximum help and efficiency for you. But I do wanna give you a few keys and steps to success when you're crafting an effective outreach message. Number one is as simple as being kind and respectful. Nobody wants to help someone out that they perceive as a jerk. So be kind to the playlisters when you reach out to them. Step two is to make your message personal. Now, even though I use a template, I take the time to personalize the template. I think that this will go a long way in making it seem like you're not just sending out an e-blast that you know somebody received that might feel spammy, but actually take the time to, at a bare minimum, address the playlister by name and include the name of the playlist in your message. If you can add other personal touches, even better. I think personalizing your message will go a long way in how successful your outreach is or isn't. Tip number three is don't be afraid to follow up. I'll typically do a round of follow-ups three to four days after a release. So let's say a release is on a Friday and I send out my first round of messages on that Friday. Typically on Monday or Tuesday, I'll send a brief but friendly follow-up to everyone I reached out to that I hadn't heard a yes or no from. You obviously never wanna be annoying here, but do keep in mind that the squeaky wheel gets the grease. Again, keep your follow-ups kind, short, and to the point, but definitely do follow up. Sometimes I'll do a third follow-up around one week post-release. I don't always do this, but use your judgment if you think a third follow-up is warranted. While you're in the thick of actually doing your playlist outreach, let me give you a few more important things to keep in mind. Number one, and this one is so important, is never pay to play. Don't pay anyone a penny to add your song to the playlist. If a playlister says, I love your song, pay me X amount of dollars and I'll add it for X amount of time, run from them. Don't do it. Paying for play in any capacity is strongly against Spotify company policy and both you and the playlister can get in a lot of trouble if you take part in this. Seriously, don't do it. I was at an event last year with one of the team members from Spotify Nashville and I actually asked her about this very thing. Of, hey, how do you know when pay for play is going on? All she said to me was this, trust me, we're a multi-billion dollar company and we know how to find out everything. You don't want to mess with this. It was enough to scare me away from never ever doing it. I'd never done it and after hearing that, I knew I was never ever gonna pay for play. The next thing to keep in mind is don't get discouraged if you don't hear back from several people. This is honestly nothing more than a numbers and a legwork game. 
You can expect to hear back from more people if you reach out to a thousand playlisters versus a hundred versus 10. You know, you just have to reach out to several to not hear anything or to maybe occasionally hear no to say yes, which leads me to point three, which is in the case of Outskirts, a couple of yeses from big playlists that kind of rivaled the size of Spotify editorial playlist made the entire process that I just laid out worth it. Remember, we're controlling what we can control here and putting in the legwork to promote your music will be worth it. So these previous six steps all lead us right here to step seven, which is to start to let the Spotify algorithm work for you. Once you've put in the hard work of doing the previous six steps consistently over numerous releases, Spotify's algorithm will actually start to take notice and will start automatically through algorithmic playlists feeding your music to your followers and to people who have listened to your music before. To use Outskirts as an example, honestly, every single release we don't even do the six steps that I just laid out for you anymore. We did every release at first, but anymore we don't because honestly we're at the point with algorithmic playlists that we're virtually guaranteed a baseline of a good number of streams. Last month alone, if looking at our Spotify for Artists data, we had around 267,000 streams in 28 days just from algorithmic playlists with no label and without spending a dollar in playlist promotion. Again, this has nothing to do with banking on editorials. Like I mentioned, we've never even landed an editorial playlist, but through diligently doing the steps that I've laid out for you in this video, we've got to the point now where algorithm starts working for us. And in many ways, I feel that playing the algorithm game is a lot better than playing the Spotify editorial game. While it's great, for example, if your song gets on one of the big Spotify editorial playlists like New Music Friday, the problem is the next Friday is gonna roll around and the Friday after is gonna roll around and several Fridays down the road, your song's obsolete and is off that playlist. Sure, you can get some good listenership and some good streams while your song is on the big editorial playlist, but Spotify is constantly changing the editorial playlist, especially the big ones. So if the bulk of your streaming strategy is to bank on big editorial playlists, like I said, that can be good for a time, but in the case of several artists, I've seen that when they get off of those playlists, their streams and monthly listeners drop significantly. I've seen streams and monthly listeners cut as much as in half from artists that are depending too heavily on the editorial playlist. So to me, the algorithmic playlist game is definitely a bit of the long game, but by putting in the work with these user-generated playlists, you're ultimately gonna be putting yourself in the best position to get on these Spotify algorithmic playlists and have the Spotify algorithm work for you. All right, so that's a wrap on this video of how I grew my Spotify monthly listeners from zero to over 300,000 and how you can do the same thing. I believe that if you follow these steps of making great high quality music, setting up your Spotify page with a high quality brand, scheduling a release date with ample time, scouring playlists, compiling data, crafting an effective message and reaching out to playlists, and then letting the Spotify algorithm work for you. I believe that you will see your Spotify monthly listeners grow as I've seen for myself and others time and time again. If this video brought value to you, would you comment down below, like this video, subscribe to the channel, and ring that notification bell for more content just like this. Now, as I mentioned back in step one, if you're someone that's needing help upping the quality of your music, as well as increasing your understanding of the music business, that I have a couple ways I can help you. And I wanna tell you about those couple ways I can help right now. The first way I can help is that I have a hand-picked network of trusted partners available for hire right now. In my now six and a half years of writing and producing full-time here in Nashville, I've been so fortunate to work alongside and become great friends with some of the world's best producers, songwriters, mixers, and other creatives. While I am personally available for hire on select projects due to demand, I simply can't say yes to every opportunity that comes my way. So because of this, I've created my handpicked network of trusted partners that you can hire. I'm now able to offer you this versatile and highly skilled network, honestly, a network with skills that surpass my individual capabilities. The other way I can help is by personally speaking into your music career, giving you feedback on your music and providing you with insights from my years in the music business. I have a limited number of one-on-one -on -one coaching spots available to help music makers of all levels up the quality of their music and increase their knowledge of the music business. To learn more about this one-on-one -on -one coaching and hiring a trusted partner, visit my website, which you can find in the description down below. I also wanna give a big thank you to Bandsize for sponsoring today's video. Again, to learn more about Bandsize and to have them help you with your website, check them out in the description below. And until then, we'll see you next time.